There we go. Okay. Finally. Well, there I am. <laughs> what a pain in the butt technology is, guys. You don't even know. You don't even know. Well, some of you know. All right. Now that you guys can hear me, um, <laughs> I'm going to guess I'm too freaking loud now. So, uh, okay. Let me increase my size here. All right, guys, let's let's start anew. So only four minutes of just total travesty. All right, so just FYI, I was trying out a new software. That's what I was trying to tell you guys when you totally couldn't hear me. Um, Stream Streamlabs OBS versus regular OBS. And for whatever reason, audio just wasn't working. So anyway, let's get into this. First off, let me tell you, uh, happy birthday, Tom. I appreciate you coming by. And uh, Shi Flung Dung, I appreciate you giving up free drinks to come and watch me drink on camera. So I hope that you're drinking along with me because you already bought it. So it may as well be free because otherwise it's just sitting there and you're, you know, not going to go away. Let me talk about this guy. So um, as some of you could tell from the thumbnail, I got a little gift in the mail today. And this gift is the Old, Pul old Pulteney 1983 Vintage. <clears throat> so... Let me tell you a little bit about this and then we're going to totally just get right into this because I'd rather drink and talk because that's, you know, name of the show. Um, a little while ago, uh, maybe like a month and a half, two months ago, a guy named Eric, who is one of my Patreons, uh, patrons, messaged me. And I think I had mentioned on one of my live streams that it was going to be my birthday in May. And he messaged me and said something like, hey, you know, what would be a bottle that you would want for your birthday? And I told him that the only thing I was planning on getting for myself was something that was 35 years old, because that's how old I just turned. Um, and he said something to the effect of like, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. <laughs> so um, I was looking at about, you know, like a couple hundred dollar bottle. I was basically looking for the cheapest 35-year-old um, that I could find, which was, I think, like 230 bucks. It was a, um, actually, I actually have no idea, it was some sort of blend, blended scotch. And so this came in the mail today. He would not tell me at all what it was. Wouldn't ruin the surprise. But he told me that something would be coming. And this is what I got. So opened up the bottle. Actually, why am I doing that to myself? I already know what it looks like. So I opened up the bottle. And this guy was staring me in the face. And it says 1983 vintage, which was the year I was born. Um, it is a 33-year-old bottle of scotch that look at the color of that look at that it's insane i can't wait to show you to you guys in the glass um i have not opened this yet this is going to be totally brand new right here on the stream um so man i'm just like so freaking excited uh i actually might even talk about like just some of the gear that comes with this because even this is like a cool box you know i mean obviously you see you see other whiskeys that come in similar boxes but i mean this thing this box itself probably weighs like two and a half pounds it's uh pretty pretty solid anyway all right this is 46 percent abv it spends most of its life in um x bourbon cask first filled bourbon cask and then it finishes itself off in a uh x uh x oloroso um what is it called sherry butt um sorry i wrote that down uh spanish oak butt i knew it was a uh, Either Oloroso is obviously sherry, but it was a Spanish oak butt. Um, it's non-chill filtered, non-colored, and as I said, 46%. Other than that, I know very, very little about this. I um, was tempted to do a little bit more research, but I thought that going into it fresh and having no clue might be a little bit more fun for just a random live stream. So let me just catch up with the chat real quick, and then I'll open this guy up. So I look like... <sighs> Damn it, cat's balls. <laughs> really? That's the first one I have to see. Not everyone who shaves their head looks like uh, like Anton LaVey. Um, not bad. I just have a lot more. Uh, all right. I would have to take a second mortgage to buy a bottle for my birth year. <laughs> Tom. Uh, thank you guys for the, the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Here we go. So I'm going to pour two of these right away. And I'm going to have the first one, you know, just kind of hang out for a minute. Um, of course, I literally just cut my nails and I can't even open this thing. Hold on. Jeez, technical difficulties is the, the, uh... can I seriously not open this thing? Hold on. It's 
not a. It's like too flush with the bottle, and it won't let me open it up. All right, so I'm busting out a knife because I'm not gonna go get anything else. If I cut myself, you guys will laugh, and that will be. I will probably also laugh. Wow, I can't even get this thing open. There we go. Just makes it all the more sweet to actually have this thing. That's a cool cap. Check that out. There's like a little star on it. All right, what do we got? Going back to your appearance, I still need to Photoshop you into suicidal tendencies. Uh, Eric Waite is in the house. Go Habs. Happy to see you guys. Happy to see all of you, actually. It's been a little while since I've done a stream. Life has been a bit in the way, I suppose. Although it's all been good. Um, I'll tell you guys a little bit about some of the bottles I got for my birthday as well. Cause you know, wouldn't you know it, people who know me know that I enjoy whiskey. So I got a few bottles. Um, oh my gosh, this already smells amazing from over there. It's just, it's like, it's like a fruit basket. <laughs> oh man, this is, this is already just amazing. Like just that smell alone. Oh my gosh. I wish I wish this was like smell of vision. <laughs> it does look like root beer. It's actually, you know what this looks like? It looks like um it looks almost like diet coke when you're right at the bottom of the bottle and uh it's like you kind of see through, you know, like that kind of color. Anyway, all right, you know I actually have this white box right here. Let me put that. Yeah, check out that color. <laughs> it's so dark. Oh man, this is going to be amazing. <sighs> Santa, this one here. <laughs> if you can get to it, you can have it. All right. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's definitely got some some sherry to it, um, no doubt about it. First one who can reach the glass can have it. Oh my God, I'm just going to nose this. I'm not even going to have it. You guys will just have to watch me like sniff at this thing. This is beautiful. This is everything that I was hoping it was going to be um, so far. I mean, so far, like just opening the bottle alone. Um, all right, so I guess you guys probably care a little bit more about what I'm actually smelling instead of just, oh my God, it's good. <laughs> <coughs> man. Oh man. All right, so... Um, you're getting kind of like dried plums a little bit. Definitely some cherry in there. It's got a very, very heavy caramel with uh, some vanilla in there as well. And maybe, no, I think, I think the caramel is really the big one. So like, you know, after kind of nosing this for a little bit. So I, I would say the most prominent bit is the caramel. Um, from further away, you know, you, you've you got, uh, sorry, I'm interrupting myself. I, you guys will never be able to see this, but the legs on this thing are just in, like, I don't even think I've ever seen anything like it. I'm just going to attempt to hold this up to the camera in the off chance you guys can see those. No, you can't see it. Damn it. It's like, they're like perfectly spaced about a half an inch apart. Like almost, it's almost weird because I'm, I'm obviously swirling it like this, but they're all just... Whatever. This is amazing. All right. Screw it. I'm, I'm just going to taste some of this and then I'll talk more about it. All right. Um, cheers to Eric. You are the man and uh, happy birthday to me. Cheers. Hmm. So it's smooth as butter. <laughs> it's, um, as I said, it's 46%. Uh, and it's very smooth. It's got a lot of, it's, you know, kind of that creamy creaminess that you get sometimes with whiskey. This is, um, almost more complex than I think I can do justice to it on that first sip. But the, um, the finish is way more sweet than the original bit that touches your tongue. Um, it's got a lot of sherry, uh, sherry notes to it for sure. Um, there is no, like you'd think, I, I think, of the 33 years, now I have not done my research, so don't quote me on any of this. Um, hold on, sorry. Um, sorry. Uh, one of the things that 
sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Uh, thanks, Chief Long Dung. You um, made one of the messages, like it hit itself kind of thing, so I had to click the thing. I totally lost my train of thought. All right, so even though I, I was doing a little bit of research, and I found that that basically they said, you know, it spends most of its life in bourbon, and then, oh my gosh, yes, it's, it's better than bourbon. Uh, it's better than Booker's, without a doubt. Booker's is only like okay really like it's it's i enjoy it but they vary so much and i've only had a couple of them that were like worth buying in um let me ask her answer a couple of these and i'll keep going whiskey dick you need to saturate a piece of paper let it dry cut into small squares and send a square to each patron to chew and taste as if it was old Pulton lsd certainly not red bush <laughs> that's creative enough to, to almost be worth it um uh, barry by the way, I owe you another Glen Karen glass. I, um, for those that don't know, if you're in my my Patreon, I send out um, whiskey dick Glen Karens, and uh, I do one every year for people who are patrons. So I already sent out the 2017 ones at the end of last year, but I'm going to do 2018 ones this year as well. Um, all right, so uh, let me get into this. So it it said that it was in oak, you know, just bourbon barrels for a really long time, and then finished in sherry, right? Exo Loroso. And it's, other than the caramel, which, like I said, is prominent in the nose, the taste doesn't have nearly as much of the caramel in it, except in the finish. So it's interesting. It's almost like like the finish of finishing it in the sherry casks is the first thing that you taste. And then afterwards, it goes to the deeper flavors, which is the caramel. Um, kind of interesting. I've, I've never really thought about it too much, but that makes a lot of sense that the fresher thing would be kind of the forefront and then the deeper flavors would be the finish but um interesting all right let me try another sip of this so although i did put a bottle of bookers over there i'm tempted to not even you know have any of that tonight because i just don't want to i don't want to ruin any of this this is amazing um all right so the reason i put that one out i just wanted to let it sit and breathe for you know 10 minutes or so I'm going to try adding just a little bit of water to this guy and see what it does. If it does anything. How many drops do you guys think? One, two? I think I'm going to do two. One drop. Two drops. And we'll see what happens. How much uh, water do you guys typically put in your whiskey when you're trying it? Do you use like a spoon? Do you use a pipette? Do you use one of um, the Scotch Test Dummies little, little water things? Mm. you know what this kind of reminds me of is um i hate to say it because it's not going to do it justice because obviously like so you know like glen Murray sherry right so like that i honestly think is like a really good bottle like way more than what it's worth uh, and this is a taste a million times better than that i'm not going to pretend but just the the prominence of the sherry Whereas the Glen Murray has it from being finished, you know, like a, what, I forget how old that even is, like a few years, and then it's finished for like six months. Like that forefront is very similar. It's just a very sh strong sherry uh, flavor right at the beginning. But then the complexity that follows it is where this is really interesting. Um, the water did help to bring out some of the fruit in here. Um, I got, um, oddly enough, a little bit of like strawberry in here. Um, What fruits, spices, florals, et cetera, would you say the sherry provides? Um, you know, Eric, honestly, you could probably answer that better than I could. But, uh, hold on. White Walker bottles. Johnny Walker, White Walker. Is that like um, a Game of Thrones thing, Shi Flung Dung? Because I'm going to be all about that if they do that. I don't care if it's a gimmick. Um, oh, man, Eric. <laughs> Damn it, you got to ask me hard questions when I'm, like, trying to just drink and be be happy <laughs> um oh man i'm so excited all right i am definitely going to get my hands on a johnny walker white walker bottle there is no saltiness um in this whatsoever all right let me let me actually try to think about this uh eric it's a little tougher to do like detailed nosing when you're doing a live stream because i don't want to just sit here with my eyes closed and like quiet um all right let's see if i can get anything here It smells so much like another bottle that I've had, and I'm racking my brain trying to get to it. Hey, Dad. <laughs> um, the fall or winter of the Johnny Walker White Walker bottles. 
Oh, this fall or winter. That's so awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. So, Dad, since you're on here, um, these guys are saying that Johnny Walker is making a White Walker bottle off of uh, Game of Thrones. So it's going to be out in the fall or winter. If it's winter time, I know what you can get me for Christmas. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I don't even have, like, words. This is just so delicious. You guys remember when I did that 50-year-old on, on one of the live streams a while ago? That that was actually not that great compared to this, which, I mean, the I think the other one was like, for a bottle of it was like four or five grand. Um, this is, I think, like roughly 500, 550, somewhere in there. I would take this over that 50-year-old any day. Um, this is considerably better. All right, so um, I know I still haven't gotten to your question, Eric. I'm trying to figure it out. They do that, but they don't do Johnny Walker Skywalker bottle. <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea too. No, there's no there's no salt, there's no brine whatsoever that I'm that I'm getting. I know it's um supposedly or not supposedly, it's they said something about that in the description. Um so the aroma says from the depth and sweetness of stewed fruit and toffee, a chocolatey aroma develops with spicy vanilla and oily citrus, adding complexity and weight, sublimely balance uh sublime sorry, sublimely balanced and relentlessly rich geez i can't read the taste is full-bodied and mouth coating the sweet and savory heart is reminiscent of salted caramel and dried fruit with uh, while honey and vibrant spicy vanilla build contrast and breadth of flavor the creamy finish is long and elegant so yeah i mean i didn't you're you're mentioning salt i'm not tasting salt it does say salted caramel maybe i just need to spend more time with it uh, the ABV is 46%. What's going on, Russ? I'm glad you could make it. You're always welcome, Dad. <laughs> Come on up. You and I will polish off this bottle. It'll be a good time. Mm. Now, there was a ton of stuff inside this box that I uh, kind of wanted to check out. I'm not about to read through all this. As you saw, I'm not very good at reading, apparently. But... um. Yeah, no, it's just about old Pultney, which is going to be good for when I do an actual episode on this to get some history because I looked at their website and there's barely anything on there. Um, yes, it's 46. So let's see. So let me talk to you guys a little bit about some of the other stuff that I got for my birthday. And I'm going to grab it behind me because I totally forgot to do it before the live stream started. So hold on one second. So I just kind of hide some of this stuff here. Do, do, do. Pretend you didn't see that. All right. So my my wife and kids got me something I'm pretty excited about as well, which is another little box here. Um, let's open this guy. And this is the Johnny Walker collection. Um, it's a bunch of smaller bottles of all the different Johnny Walkers, including, you know, you've got black, gold, platinum, and blue, which strikes me as odd because I get that maybe they just didn't want to go with like a way huge box, but not that I'm exactly suggesting they go for red, but when you think about what they've gotten here uh, for a little bit more money, they could have done the whole line. They could have done the red, the double black, and the green, and they would have completed it. So I'm a little surprised that they didn't do that, but either way, I'm very excited about this because I know this thing was about 80 bucks and it's going to save me a ton of money for all of my uh, reviews. So I do have a bottle of Johnny Walker Green, um, which was selected by one of my patrons to be um, the whiskey, uh, whiskey that I review next month. Um, every now and then on Patreon, I do a like a patron selected one of the bottles that I do kind of thing. And um yeah, so there were a few different votes, and I decided to go with the Johnny Walker Green because I wanted to kind of continue through that line. Now, I have some another bottle here that wasn't quite a birthday present, but is a very special bottle um, that I'm really excited about. And I'm going to delay for just one sec just to see what people are saying in here. Build suspense. Happy birthday, Bill. I need to go get dinner. All right. Uh, when I was your age, I still had some hair. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Appreciate it. I have a little hair. I need to shave again. Um, 
All right, let's see. That's really cool. My OP21 is in the bunker at the Whiskey Thief. Um, no red. <laughs> uh, Whiskey Thief, I don't I don't recognize your name. I'm glad to see you around. Um, are you a, a new guy on the uh, a new guy on the scene? Are those 375s or 750? They're 375s. Um, yeah, so well 230 is considerably like way overpriced, Sean. Um, for a Johnny Walker blue, you can get them at like BJ's for like 180. You can get them at a lot of places for like 200. Um, I didn't say I wouldn't touch on the red Walker again. It's, uh, you know, it's possible. I, um, you know, I'm sure I'll bust it out every now and then just for laughs, but anyway. All right. So the other bottle that I was talking to you guys about, um, $125 in Hawaii though, Derek, come on. Everything on Hawaii is more expensive, other than pineapples. Had my honeymoon in Hawaii. Actually, I've been to Hawaii three different times. Um, got some cool dive stories about that, but I've talked about some of those. All right, so the other one that I want to talk about, this one was not a birthday present, once again, as I said. This was actually sent to me by, um, uh, oh my gosh, Woodford Reserve. So they have a special bottling this year called uh, the Woodford Reserve Batch Proof. And this is 125.8 proof. This is uh, about a $100 bottle, and it's their special edition this year. They're actually doing two different specials. Um, normally, they do the master collection every year. Um, this is one that they just wanted to try. Uh, usually, when you see Woodford Reserve try something, it means that they're trying to make it one of their main lines. For example, the Woodford Reserve Rye started out as a master um uh, sorry, what did I, master, oh my gosh, one of the master collections. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the barrel proof or batch proof, whatever they call it, um, same thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if I saw this come on the shelves in a couple of years. Um, <laughs> whiskey thief. Um, let's see, uh, quiet man really good all right yeah so anyway like i said this is 125.8 proof i haven't opened it yet but i will be doing a review on this pretty soon because i'm pretty excited about it like beyond excited about it honestly all right so let's get back to the old pulley because i am having a blast drinking this <laughs> so what are you guys all drinking tonight mm. you know how as you drink the same glass of whiskey over a little bit of time you know, a lot of the taste kind of dull. Now, I'm not going to say that's not entirely happening here, but I am very surprised at the bottom of this glass, which I poured both of these about the same amount. So, I mean, that's that's a solid dram. Um, this is still as delicious every single sip. My, my mind and my tongue are not really getting used to it. It's just that good. So, hmm. <laughs> Sean, I gotta, I gotta know what are you drinking? You gotta tell it. Oh, you drinking water? All right, I'll drink with you. <laughs> trying to cleanse the palate a little bit, so I can try to get an idea if sitting out for what have I been on? About twenty minutes um, is gonna do much of anything. So, <laughs> well, twenty-seven minutes actually, twenty-eight minutes actually, but four of those were. Uh, <laughs> the term a shit show <laughs> man i'm so disappointed in that that was annoying all right look at that color man look at that i'm gonna use my head there there you go now you guys can see i should just do that every time <laughs> buffalo trace nice you know it's funny i've heard a lot of people saying they're hard, having a tough time even finding buffalo trace nowadays um this the one that i just had i did it without water for about half of it, and then I did it with water for about half of it. This one is without water, but it's been sitting out for 20 minutes. Let it kind of breathe a little bit. Hmm. Oops, sorry about that. Hmm. I am not drunk. I had one, and it's what, 46%? It's just been a long day. It's almost 10 o'clock where I am. I get up at like, 5 30. it's part of the reason you guys don't see me do uh uh live stream every single week it's just my life is exhausting 
So interesting thing, the nose after you let it sit out for a while is significantly less impressed. Hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Santa. You're the man. Um, the nose is significantly less impressive after you've let it sit out for a while. So if you want to have this, I would suggest nosing it like right away. It still tastes, it still smells very fruity, but everything is dulled a little bit. Um, I know what you're thinking. No, it's not because I've already had one. My nose is better than that. I can usually go two or three drinks before the nose starts really kind of fading. Oh, I forgot, I forgot about that a little alert. Oh, I still can't tell what he's drinking. It's not Johnny Walker Red. It looks like it says The Velvet, but I'm guessing it's some sort of fake whiskey. Um, Cal Bill. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, yes, the Power Glove will will, will return someday. Um, and I'm, I'm going to stop asking for Super Chats just because I, I feel kind of weird asking for money. Um, I happened to be looking at my analytics the other day, and I've, I've been noticing, like, you know, my... My views are down and my subscribers are down and everything's down. Um, and then I realized that like at least the revenue being down was because I haven't been doing live streams and you guys are extremely generous and typically send me super chats and that all counts towards your cumulative um, revenue. So anyway, aside from that, so the nose is a bit more dull, but let's see how the taste goes. Hmm. Taste is about the same. There's a little bit less of the, the caramel in there. A little bit more, uh, it's a, you know, like when you drink a, a dry red wine and it's almost like, kind of like, feels like it's oily a little bit. Uh, no, that's not, that's not the right way to say it. Ignore the red wine part. This tastes a little bit oily and it's like really coating the inside of my mouth. So it's, Although every sip is like, you know, gradually getting a little bit less um, robust than the previous sip, it's not fading too fast, like I said, but it is definitely fading. And I think at this point, it's more just that I've got so much of this. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that <clears throat> this is an extremely viscous kind of whiskey. It's very thick and it's very oily. And because of that, I feel like it's coating the inside of my mouth and I can't taste it as well. Um, but that feels like a good thing to me because it's just, it's got something to it. It's not like a watery whiskey. I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, I appreciate this, Santa. Uh, let's see, I'm just getting into whiskey. Had Johnny Walker Red, Johnny Walker Black, and Woodford Reserve. So Benjamin, tell me, what did you... I'm going to guess that you appreciated the Johnny Walker black over the red just because it's better. Um, but did you like the Johnny Walker black or the Woodford Reserve more? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what that's about, Sean, but we could talk. That'd be fun. Um, let's see in Kentucky on the bourbon trail, bourbon pickup recommendation. Uh, wow. Brendan. Nice. Um, where are you planning on visiting? I'm dying to go do the, the bourbon trail. I just, it's tough. You know, I have a four year old and a two year old. It's tough to get away. So as he proxy, he says black <laughs> as his proxy, he says black. Yeah. All right. Good, Ben. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. So if you're looking to branch out a little bit from Woodford reserve, um, try Larceny. Um, see what you think about Larceny. It's similar priced. Actually, it's a little cheaper. Um, I just bought a bottle of it the other day for 28 I think. Um, you could probably get it for about 30 roughly. Um, but I think you'll really enjoy Larceny. And then from there, if you want, just comment on any of my videos if you want a recommendation on something. I'm happy to help out. Respond basically to pretty much every comment. So um, I'm happy to help you uh, steer towards things that you will enjoy. So the things that I've been drinking, like, so I've been doing batch filming. And it's also another reason I haven't been doing these live streams quite as frequently is because with the batch streaming, I kind of get more into, um, 
Like I do a whole bunch at once and then I kind of sit around and I do other stuff. Like I've been watching Daredevil season one recently. Oh man, that's a good show. That's a really good show. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute, but I have no spoilers, but um, I've been doing the batch filming. And because of that, I kind of haven't been like as into doing the whole whiskey thing because it's like weeks before I have to film again. But I have been drinking, obviously, and I've been trying new stuff and I've been trying to find bottles that I think you guys will enjoy watching the reviews on. And so, like I said, I did pick up a bottle of Larceny. I've also picked up that Johnny Walker Green. Um, let's see what else. I've picked up, um, well, actually, I've, I've kind of been given a lot of things lately. Uh, but I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up pretty soon. But as always, I'm interested to know what you guys will think in the live chat here, what you guys think I should do reviews on. So I have not tried the Angel Envy Rye, but I have tried the Angel's Envy. I got it at my bachelor party, actually, and it was very, very good at the time, although it was before I was super into whiskey, so I'd love to revisit it and see what I think. Um, let's see. <laughs> Brendan, I don't think that you could have made more typos in those three sentences that if you tried, but I'm just joking with you. Um, yeah, you definitely should try Larceny. So try Old Granddad. Now that is one thing. Would you guys like to see me do Old Granddad? Cause I have no clue about it. I've never tried it. I, um, I think it'd be fun. It's, I mean, it's a name that people know, so maybe it's something people would search for, but I, uh, I'm a little worried it's going to be another Black Velvet or another Johnny Walker Red, um, just the bourbon version of it. I had some guy in the comments today preaching about how wonderful uh, Black Velvet was today. Hilarious. I, I just, I was like, can't, can't like the comment, can't even respond without just being a dick. <laughs> See, when I hear something is good for what you get, uh, for what it says, granddad is pretty good or pretty, I'm assuming he meant, means it's basically good for what you pay for. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I could try that. I see it every time I go to the liquor store and I always consider buying it. It's got that bright orange label, it looks terrible, <laughs> but I'm always tempted to buy it because it's what, like $15, maybe even less. It's pretty, pretty good. I had somebody the other day say, hey, can you recommend a bunch of different whiskeys for $10? I'm like, I can't even think of any whiskey for $10 that doesn't come in a plastic jug. <laughs> Old Granddad 114 is really good, huh? Interesting. That's good to hear. I would love to start a, a series on Old Granddad. I, um, I don't know. I would love to. I, I, I know I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment, but I enjoy starting at the bottom and working my way up. So I've tried a lot of really crappy whiskeys. Um, but actually, no, that's not true. I've only probably tried about like five really crappy whiskeys. A lot of a lot of ones that I just like wouldn't recommend you have. But there's been very few ignores it ignore it um, whiskeys that I've reviewed. So. So here's a question for you guys, because I um. Wow, this is a uh, this is kind of hitting me hard. It's only forty six percent though. That's surprising. It's weird the, the way that different whiskeys can hit you. Um, I feel like I could be drinking the Booker's, and I mean, I'm only one and a half glasses in, and it's definitely hitting me. So anyway, I'm gonna be doing a beginner's guide to rye, and then probably a beginner's guide to Canadian whiskeys. Um, and then ultimately a Japanese one as well, but I just don't know enough about Japanese to feel like I can speak intelligently about what beginners should start on. Nor do I really think many Japanese whiskeys are like beginner material, but whatever. Are there any topics that you guys are curious about, uh, as far as whiskey goes that you'd like to see, uh, video, um, on? I do have one video planned. It's probably going to be a really long video, like possibly like 20 minutes, um, I'll make it worth it though, you know, like graphics and it'll be really high production value compared to even my normal videos, which are pretty decent. Um, but I'm curious if you guys are like interested in anything in particular. What's going on, Six? Nice to see you. I'm a little surprised that Malta in Montreal didn't show up tonight. Must be busy. U.S. shootout, the best whiskey from each state. That's an interesting idea. Hmm. Have you tried Henry McKenna? 
I've heard good things about it. I was wondering what you, th I haven't tried that actually. You know, six, I got to tell you, your logo looks fantastic in the chat. It's like so obvious who you are, you know, I love it. Japanese would be great, especially with the Hibiki issues. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've really only had like three Japanese whiskeys. Um, so I don't even think I could do a top 10. I mean, certainly not without kind of crowdsourcing a little bit like you guys saw that I was doing with rye the other day. I've had more than 10 ryes, but like without getting a real feel of what everybody kind of thinks is a good starter rye, it's a little tough. I certainly don't want to just be like, hey, everybody try these 10 that I had, you know. Um, six, dude, dude, so good. <laughs> Non-distiller products. Interesting. So you mean like blendeds or what do you mean by non-distiller products? Shackleton's. I haven't tried Shackleton's. I have not tried the Devil's Cut either. That's one that's I know Swami's not a fan of. And uh, I'm tempted to, to try it just to see how bad it is. Or if I completely disagree with them, it'd be interesting to see. Japanese are getting discontinued. How am I so not aware of that? Um, what do you mean? Can you elaborate, Philippe? You don't like my picture? That's my... <laughs> Tom, I laugh every time I see your your picture, and I know that's not you. It looks... Um, I forget who that that is. I've definitely figured it out once or twice before. Um, let's see. Definitely try the Henry McKenna. I've heard that recommended to me several times, actually. Haven't because of the low ABV. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I actually, I do have a bottle. It's from a, it's from one of the small distilleries that, as I told you guys, I'm going to start, I'm going to be featuring more and more. Um, it's called Uncle, Uncle Somethings. Um, hold on. I have it. Uncle, hold on. Reviews. Uncle Nearest. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not, I wasn't a fan of it the first time I tried it. And uh, we'll have to see if it gets better next time I try it. But they're one of those uh, MGP things. They got all their bourbon just kind of shipped in. Let me tell you though, that two bar spirits that I, I did that review on, I don't know if it came across very well in the video, but like I really liked that whiskey. I ended up giving the bottle to my dad um, just because I felt like I should share it a bit more. But um, I've had people over and I gave it to them and they were all just like, wow, this is actually really good. So, yeah. I, now, I did hear that, that the Japanese whiskeys are getting even more and more scarce because of them like kind of mis uh, underestimating how popular they would be. Now, that I heard of, but I didn't hear anything about anybody getting discontinued. Okay, that makes sense. Bill, did you know this brand of whiskey before the gentleman sent it to you? Or is it... So Old Pulteney, I've definitely heard of. Um, I've actually, I, I was talking to, I think I was talking to my dad actually on the ride home today because I, I wanted to call him up and tell him, tell him about what I got. And uh, I was just saying like, you know, everything I've heard about Old Pulteney is every one of their expressions is fantastic. So when I heard that I got this, or when I saw this, I was just over the moon. I was like, oh my God, this is not only them, but it's a good one of them, <laughs> so, supposedly. You know, I hadn't tried it as you guys saw me kind of fail to open that bottle a little bit, had to bust out a knife. Um, so either way, I'm like, I'm so excited to have this. And I'm, uh, I'm actually more excited to share it with some people. I'm, um, I might purposefully have people over pretty soon. It is my first Old Pulteney, so I, I think I'm probably up to be disappointed when I start going to the, the lower end stuff, but we'll see. All right, so yeah, bourbon shenanigans, that's interesting, that's good to know. Um, yeah, that makes sense, Philippe. See, I almost wish, and I know this is kind of a weird thing to wish for, I wish that they would just kind of keep to their standards and charge more for it. You know, while they're kind of building up stock. I mean, we're talking, I don't know anything about the whiskey business. Well, that's not true. I know a little bit about the whiskey business from talking to 
people, but it's it's tough to say like they should just sell it for more money because they're not going to sell as many. But it's tough to think that they're going to compromise what made them famous in the first place. Like, let's think Yamazaki, right? So, like, Yamazaki 12, because I, I do have a limited experience with Japanese whiskey, so I'll pick one I know. Yamazaki 12 is amazing, right? It's, like, I thought it was so good when I first had it. And I'm sure it's really, really good still. But if they're putting out Yamazaki, like, no-age statements, just Yamazaki, like, that's going to suck because it's going to turn people off of it if it's not as good. I mean, Yamazaki 12 won all kinds of awards, but that's their lowest age statement. Now, if they want to go like Yamazaki 8 and make it not quite as good, but you know what you're getting, like, I don't know. I guess as far as I'm concerned, I would rather have something with an age statement, even if it was a low one, so that I know it's going to be a consistent thing, you know, not just a no age statement. I would rather have them have less. To, you guys know what I'm trying to say, I think. Um, all right, kind of like Elijah Craig and Knob Creek losing the, the age statement. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of Locke Le, Le Mans 12? I have not, Ronald. I've heard about OP21, and uh, that is something I'm, I, I have no idea. Actually, uh, Bourbon Shenanigans, can if you're on your computer or if you're on your phone or whatever, Look up the price of an OP21 because I just have no clue and I, I don't want to do that while I'm on this thing. I'm giving you a homework assignment. <laughs> um, let's see. Lower end Old Pulteney is worth the journey. Okay, that's good to hear. Wow, a lot of praise for Old Pulteney. First, that is totally me in the picture. And second, all OP is quality. You won't be let down. Is that really you, Tom? You almost look like uh, you remind me of somebody from... Um, what is that show? Deadliest Catch. <laughs> You kind of look like a like a you've been at sea for a while, doing the I think it's I think it's the um, the color of the face there, which looks to be doctored a bit. Jeez, I can't even keep up with the comments. It's nice to see so many people in here, and it's nice to uh, kind of be on a live stream again and hang out with all you guys. I always like drinking with with all of you, and so many familiar names. It's nice to see, and a lot of new names too. So good to have new people here too. Let's see. I bought a case of OP12 at 29 bucks. Wow. Yeah, I'd pretty much buy any any bourbon at 21. I mean, not bourbon, any whiskey at $29, especially if it was a name I had heard of. Um, but as you guys know, I don't steer away from the, the crap whiskeys either. Let's see. I would say if it wasn't barbecuing, it would probably not be that good to me. What is funny is Elmer T. Lee used to be my favorite when I was first started drinking whiskey. Not now. I do have an Elmer T. Lee something or other that um, a viewer named Big Army Guy, I think, sent me. And I feel terrible. He sent it to me like six months ago, and I still haven't even opened it. It's just so hard to keep up with all this stuff. Um, okay, so you did put a filter on it. That makes me feel a little bit better. All right, 21-year-old is about 160 to 200 US dollars. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, not something I'll be buying myself very soon. Let's see. Wow. You guys, you guys are talking so fast. I can't even keep up with the chat. Let's see. All right. So what else have we been up to? Um, so I have actually been talking to a new company. Um, they're in they're in California. I don't remember the name of the distillery, but they make a Jap uh, they they make a Japanese whiskey, not in California. They import it. And it's a rice whiskey, which at first I actually didn't realize, but is when I first saw that, my first thought was, okay, this is a person who is making a whiskey, which is not actually whiskey, it's a spirit. I had a company a long time ago contact me about a, a whiskey that they made that was completely based on sunflower seeds or like 70% sunflower seeds. And I remember when I talked to them, I was like, I don't think I can review this because it's not technically whiskey. And that's like one of the few rules I have. It has to be whiskey. That's why you guys haven't seen me do any of these uh, flavored whiskeys before because they're not technically whiskeys. Um, anyway, so I, I like kind of did some research and apparently rice in the United States is considered a cereal grain, so it can be a whiskey. Now that is kind of funny because over in Japan, it's not considered, um, a whiskey technically, which I mean, that, that's just odd to me, <laughs> you know, like you can have a rice spirit, but not rice whiskey. So anyway. 
they're probably going to be sending me a bottle pretty soon. I'll probably be doing another one of those, uh, you know, um, small distillery highlight kind of thing. I still haven't come up with a good name for that series. I really, I, I would love to, to have you guys help me out to think of a, a new name for that series. Basically, it's, as most of you know, it's small distilleries that are putting out, usually it's like one to three products tops, and they want me to kind of get a hold of their stuff to feature them on the site. And it's supposed to be that extra episode randomly on a Wednesday. And I can't think of a clever name for it. And, you know, like, if if one of you comes up with a clever name for it and it's something I use, I'll send you a Whiskey Dick t-shirt or something like that. I do have an Instagram, Brendan. It's uh, at the Whiskey Dick or at Whiskey Dick. I think it's at the Whiskey Dick. Pretty much all of my social media is at, uh, is at the Whiskey Dick. I, um... I use it in, I wouldn't say infrequently. Sometimes I use it like a lot and other times it'll be like a couple days between posts. But, and, and by the way, I hashtag everything with dick pics because <laughs> hilarious. D-I-C-P-I-C-S. Mm. Man, that's beautiful. This is such a good bottle. I'm trying to think if it's the best, best I've ever had. And it's tough to say. It's definitely in my top three. Um, the other two, I'm trying to think. That 50 year old was really good, but it's tough to it's tough to really remember it because it was just the one dram, and it's tough to make a, a good decision off of one dram. <sighs> mini dick mini review. <laughs> I used to have a series I called Whiskey Dick Quickies, which was supposed to be. Anytime I was reviewing a whiskey from a distillery that I've already reviewed, because, you know, those videos tend to be like three to four minutes instead of like seven to eight. And uh, yeah, I just figured that was a little too on the nose. So Whiskey Dick is, is pretty clever, but Whiskey Dick Quickies is like just going a little bit too far with it, I think. Excuse me. Little dicks. <laughs> Stronger sake. and Interesting. Um, Koval, rye, bourbon, good stuff. Don Ruger. All right, so micro dicks. Hump day quickies. <laughs> that's funny, but wow, that's really just... <laughs> Take a tram of something else to re-energize your palate, then go back. All right. Um, yeah, let me, let me open up this guy. <clears throat> I think I will just open up the Johnny Walker Black. Well, I don't know how long I'm planning on going. I was only going to go until 10.30. It's almost it's almost that right now. Do I want to do this? Oh, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to have... I don't think that, that my palate's quite there for, for trying a brand new scotch, but I guarantee you it's there for a new bourbon. Um, I think it would be Bill at Whiskey D. Ah, uh, Don, how'd you get a concussion? What'd you do? Hit your head on the headboard too many times? Ah. <laughs> Sorry, that was rude. All right. Um, I need to grab another Glen Karen. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back. Oh, victim of a hit and run. Jeez. Now I actually feel bad. Uh, well, I'm glad you're okay. Were you on a bike or something? Hump day quickies. That's pretty funny. Totally won't be the name of the show, but... All right, let's see. All right, so as I said, um, I actually, I haven't done any research on this other than this is 125.8 proof. So, you know, you guys seem to like to watch me drink things that are just super high in alcohol content, I think. But uh, limited batch proof edition. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's, 
Yeah, never mind. All right, so let's see how this goes. Hmm. The nose is actually a little dirty. It's um It's not great. I'm kind of surprised. It doesn't smell like a Woodford Reserve. Yeah, Santa, I did. Um, I'm trying to think of what to call this because it's, it's really just like, it's not really that pleasant, honestly. It is actually uh, similar, but yeah, I have a bottle of that too, actually. Hmm. Just realized I didn't turn the lights on behind me, so oh well. I can't describe the nose to you. Um, I'm going to blame it on having too much of this old Pulteney, even though it's only a couple of drams, but um, it's mostly just that it's not very good. <sighs> Best I'm getting out of there is some orange, but um, let's go ahead and try to taste this. So cheers. Um, actually, so Brendan, this is the batch proof. Um, it's a special edition. <sighs> what should I, what should I cheers to this time? Um, you know, actually, cheers to Woodford Reserve for sending me a bottle. Hmm. Okay, taste makes up for the nose. Taste is fantastic, but that burn is brutal. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. Um, that is right up there with uh, any other, you know, high ABV. Actually, no, before I do that, I'm going to try one more sip here um, just to kind of break that, you know, take the edge off. I had that first sip and now I can really kind of get it. But that that taste is fantastic, actually. I'm um, I'm shocked. After the nose, I was not expecting this to be very good. Um, good in a different way. It's very oaky, extremely oaky. It's does have a little bit of the orange coming through. It's like an orange zesty um kind of coffee grounds with just a bunch of oak um let me try another sip hmm i just realized i'm totally just like mm -hmm. right in the mic sorry about that um wow that's great this is really good <laughs> this has just been a night of great whiskey good for me <laughs> All right, let me answer a couple of these questions here. So this bottle is the Woodford Reserve Batch Proof. It's 125.8 proof. It is a limited edition. They are only doing these very briefly. Um, I had tried to get in touch with Woodford Reserve to get a bottle of this prior to the Kentucky Derby because as most of you will know, they sponsor the Kentucky Derby. And uh, if you watched it, you would have actually seen a lot of the I don't know what position they are. I don't know horse racing that much. It's not the jockeys, but they were like people that were riding next to the jockeys prior to the thing starting. I'm going to guess it's some sort of, not security, but just, you know, they're, they're people who work there. And uh, they all had a black jacket on and it said Woodford Reserve on the back. So anyway, um, tried to get a bottle of this prior to that so I could kind of, you know, mix the two together and uh, get some of that, that uh, sweet, sweet, you know, natural uh, clicks. Didn't get it until about three days after, unfortunately. So, oh well. Um, let's see. What's the uh, bill? Where'd you get? All right. So I got the old Pulteney from an awesome uh, patron of mine named Eric. And he is the man and sent me a bottle. If you're interested in the story from that, check out the beginning of the, of the stream. I'm not going to go into that whole thing again, unfortunately. It just, you know, don't want to bore people. Um, let's see. Old Forester Distillery Row Series is like Woodford Reserve on steroids. You would uh, like the 1920 Prohibition, I think. I tried one of the F Old Forester. Um, it was some sort of special edition they were doing this year. Maybe it was the 1920. I went to a whiskey tasting in Ling um, Rhode Island, uh, Lincoln, Rhode Island, I think, and uh, they had it there. It was really good. My dad loves Old Forester. I, I'm not as big of a fan of it. But uh, the most recent time him and I went out together, I, I bought a couple bottles for the show and I bought him a bottle of Old Forester. And I said, you can drink the whole thing, but at some point 
um, you know, just some one of the bottles that you're drinking, you have to give it to me for a review purpose, and then you can just have it back. So, um, you know, it was just my way of, of uh, being nice. So let's see what else we got. You should send it to me so I can review it. <laughs> you wish, bourbon. I'm, I'm going to end up drinking this whole thing. I guarantee it. Um, yeah, it is very dark. You're right. It's actually as dark as the old Pulteney, which explains why it's so oaky. Um, yeah, so it's really good. Uh, the price of this is about 100 bucks. I think it's a little bit over that, but I think it's under 110 um, I agree. This is one of their best bottle designs for sure. This is a, a cool one. I love bottles that look like copper pot stills or just pot stills in general. They're, they're just a cool look, you know? Um, let's see. Yeah, you paid 100 bucks. Yeah, so is that the first CS from Woodford Reserve? Um, on my channel, yes. Last year's Master Collection uh, did not sell well. It was in the shelves all year long. Yeah, I heard that. I saw it was like a cherry something or other. I considered buying it actually when I saw it because it sounded good, but I'm glad I didn't. If it didn't sell well, it probably wasn't very good. Last year's Master Collection did not. Yeah, all right. Uh, are you a Noah Mill fan? I haven't tried it. I have enjoyed all of the 86 proof Old Forester. To get the ABV, take the proof and divide. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, Lost Americans, just like everything else we use a weird system of measurement so god i wish we were in metric it's just so stupid to be an imperial <laughs> like no I, I don't know apparently america actually is metric we just uh totally aren't we don't teach it in schools uh i will not be blending these two together because i think eric would probably kill me if i put anything into his uh <laughs> well it's not his it's mine um, actually he would probably find it funny. He probably wouldn't care. Um, but either way, I enjoy the old Pulteney too much to ever, like every drop of that will be enjoyed. Not with Coke. All right. So I'm going to finish off this glass and then probably call it a night. So, um, I don't think any of you guys actually really answered my previous question. Are there any like whiskey topics that you'd like to see covered? I'm trying to find some more like evergreen content because the reviews, I mean, yes, they'll show up in the searches, but the stuff that really actually drives my channel is things like my, you know, bourbon guide or more importantly, things like, you know, um, should you use a decanter? Uh, should you put ice or water in your whiskey? Things like that. I mean, there is only so much content you can really do, but I'm worried that I'm like missing something obvious that you guys would want to learn more about. <laughs> Russ. Um, I will say I'm the only way that I would have somebody on the show with me is um, one of my patron go, uh, levels is actually to be on the show. Um, but I wouldn't really do anything in person just for I know it sounds silly, but for safety, you know, like there's no reason to have anybody out to my house. This is an Internet show. You know I, how I uh, what I mean, Russ. Actually comes from gunpowder. Yeah. Yep. Um, whiskeys has, all right. Japanese whiskey has you interested pairing cigars, food, etc. So I, yeah, no, I did try. I, I know it's not quite what you were saying, but, um, to gas or not to gas rate your favorites types of whiskey glasses. I would like to do a part two on my types of whiskey glasses. Cause there's a lot more out there. Do a fly out to a small distillery episode. That would be fun. Actually, that'd be really fun. I have several of them close to me that I could actually just drive to instead and make like a big deal about it. That would be fun. I was actually, I was up in York, Maine uh, last weekend or no, like this, la this weekend I just passed like two days ago, actually. I was up in New Hampshire and uh, sorry, I was up in Maine. I was in York, Maine and I was, uh, there's a uh, distillery in York, Maine, right in Main Street called Wiggly Bridge and their stuff's pretty good. And I've talked to the owner a few times and, you know, told him, hey, I run this, you know, show. I'd like to do a thing. Would you like to have me come film? And he said, yes. And I've just never really followed up because I need to, I need to kind of refine my setup a bit. I only have this mic or my lavalier mic. I don't have any wireless mics. So miking up two people is kind of hard. And I, I want everything to go perfectly. And as you saw, I can't even start a live stream perfectly. So it's a little tough. Um, but that being said, I would like to really do that. And that and the uh, Sons of Liberty guys told me that I could come down there any time. And uh, they're down in Rhode Island. So I really just need to find the time to do it. But I've got some options for sure. And there's um, there's a place in Massachusetts called Berkshire 
Distillery, I think it's called, which I haven't reviewed any of their stuff yet, but I mean, they're, they're drivable too. Um, yeah, done. I have a, I have a, a whiskey, you know, the whiskey dick, just check it out on Instagram or just search for D I C P I C S, um, hashtag. Let's see. Do a fly. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Size and still size and shapes. Is it? Yeah. I would like to actually talk a little bit more about whiskey stills. Um, I think that would be a fun episode. You probably wouldn't get a ton of views, but you know, it's not really always about that. I think it'd be an interesting thing to, for myself to learn about too. Let's see. I'll give you two bottles and meet somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I guess, um, I mean, I appreciate the the thought, Russ. I just I'm not crazy about like just randomly meeting people. Um, series on NAS whiskey and no age statements. Whiskeys would be very useful. Still, size and shapes are very different topics that need to be explored more for Scotch aficionados. The whiskey pairing sounds good. I used to crap a monkey shoulder and recently tried. After I sat for about six months and had some Glenfiddich. Uh, and, oh, okay, you're talking about actually like like mixing or food pairings, I guess. I don't know. I was just there last month. Yeah, I know, Russ. I'm sorry. Interviews would be cool content. Your account breakdowns are very awesome uh, as they are. I th think a lot of us like your YouTube because it's uniquely you. Appreciate that, Don. Yeah, I try to, I not to get too, too about me. Um, I like my format and I feel like I, so I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have seen the Whiskey Vault, right? So their format is designed to look like game channels right it's all like jump cuts and like super zoomed in and like i'm making a comment that's funny you know it's like i could totally do that and i mean you guys may have seen i tried that a little bit in my most recent video it's fine um i don't know that it's my thing i i could probably make it a little bit more organic than they do but i don't know it's not really my thing i i would I don't necessarily want to have a smaller channel. I mean, I would love to hit that 100K and get that little silver play button. You yeah, know, I think that'd be cool. But, I mean, I'm at 12K. It's going to be a while before I can do that unless I have, unless something significantly changes on my channel or if, you know, somebody um, discovers this channel a little bit more. Like, it's weird because 12,000 across all of YouTube isn't that many at all. It's like a less than 1%, of course. There's, there's billions of people on YouTube. Um, but... I almost feel more like just nobody even knows about this channel, which is weird to think because 12,000 is still pretty decent in this niche. Um, Ralphie's the biggest at the moment with like 109,000, maybe something like that. So, I mean, there's there's kind of a cap to how many people can even subscribe here. All right, let's see. Um, usually, Rick, um, so usually when they add mouthfeel, it means that there's a lot of times it will be, it's a little higher ABV. And by that, it kind of coats the mouth a little bit more. So um, when you think oily, that could be a couple of different things. Either it, like higher ABV can kind of give an oily impression or just something about there being a little bit more tannins in the in the whiskey can kind of give you a better mouthfeel as well. Or um, <laughs> I know Santa, I know, but I just always want more. <laughs> um, anyway, appreciate that, Don. Um, how do I ship a bottle to you for your opinion of it? All right, Russ, uh, send me an email, thewhiskeydick at gmail.com. And, uh, that would be great. The tribe is good for entertainment, but your channel is unique. And I like drinking with one of, <laughs> with one of your bros. I appreciate that. She flung down. I love having you in the, in the chat. You've, uh, you've been showing up to the chats almost as long as anybody else. So I, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, let's see. Whiskey throttles drinking beer tonight. What the, f what the heck? <laughs> All right. Wow. I've gone a lot longer than I intended. This was supposed to be like a half hour episode. I really just wanted to drink the old Pultney and kind of get together with you guys, let you know I'm still alive other than just doing uh, the reviews. Um, all right. I'm going to talk for like two more minutes, just to kind of drink this guy. So, um, either way, I appreciate all of you guys showing up tonight. It's fun. I know it was kind of short notice. I'm curious how many, how many people I've had. Uh, tonight show up to the stream let's see i think i can see that i should probably just look later but 
whatever. It doesn't matter. So, um, yeah. All right. I'm going to go finish this, and I'm going to sign off as soon as I uh, can find the button. So thank you all for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers.